Hey everyone, it's Mark here, and today we're going to be working on the Megatech FW01. I've got a shockingly good video for you today. <laughs> today we're going to be rebuilding the suspension on the Megatech. For the tips and tricks I'm going to show you are transferable across all RC cars, whether it be a 110th electric or a 18th nitro or a standard equipped suspension on a 1 5th scale. Uh, these tips I'm going to show you on how to bleed silicon fluid you'll have never seen before and it's using bits and pieces that you'll have in your garage now. The other thing I'm gonna show you is the shockingly good way on how to rebuild these. You'll be shocked at the method I use and you won't go back to what you're doing now, guaranteed. All right, let's start by getting these shocks out. Call me crazy, but one thing I like to do is leave these screws in their original positions just so I don't have to look at the setup sheet. Another thing with the Mechatex is release the bottom first, then the top, just so you can move away this out of that holder and take it out without flexing that inner shaft. Before we start the rebuild, we'll go over to the parts washer and give these a clean. There's a couple of little bleed nipples there that we need to get to and quite often they're full of gunk and dirt and they need to be spotlessly clean for this rebuild process. So does the outside of the body and this shaft. So we'll go give those a clean. I like to use one of these shock holders. This is one I've made myself. Um, the Mechatex and a lot of other brands, they're identical front and rear, but obviously um, you're running different fluids in each. And also it's very important that these shocks are put back together as a matching pair. Let's start with the disassembly. I always like to use a ring spanner when I'm undoing these. These aluminium end caps here are very soft and if you only use a spanner, an open-ended spanner, uh, the potential to slip off is, is pretty high. So always um, use a ring spanner, it gets on there and with a nice firm twist, you can undo those. So the aim here is to get rid of all the old fluid, which I'm gonna put in a container over here. The first thing I like to do is check out the condition of these packing seals. A dead giveaway for leaking packing seals would be dirt and dust around here and even silicon fluid. Mine were nice and clean. They feel nice and tight, um, so I'm not too concerned about those. There's an O-ring here too that you can replace that seals, again, you'll know if that's leaking because you'll have seepage of fluid coming out of here. The other thing to look for is the condition of the shaft. You'll note just there, there's a shiny bit on the shaft. That's where the spring seat sits, nothing to worry about. But if you did see something like that up here, where it goes through its travel, it would be time to replace this because it would no doubt mean a leak at some stage. Also, good opportunity to make sure that everything's nice and tight while you've got it apart. Onto the shock body. We'll start by removing this little reservoir here. It's a nine mil spanner. Again, it's nice soft aluminium, so you really want to be using a ring spanner to get this job done, so you don't, don't burr over those edges. This simply unscrews. You wanna be checking this, guys, because this could be a source of air in your fluid too. If you follow my procedure today, this would be the first area you wanna look at if you're still suffering from air. So you'll see in here, there's a little piston and it has a rubber seal around it. Behind that seal, there's a spring. 
and this is what gives you the rebound in the shock absorber. If this seal is leaking, then air that's trapped in here will make its way back into the shock, shock body. A quick telltale sign whether that's leaking is check for silicon fluid in behind that piston. There shouldn't be, shouldn't be any. So there's none on that. Another space here, is, another place to look for is this O-ring too to make sure that's in good condition. You'll know whether that's leaking because you'll see silicon fluid seeping from there. Another tip when rebuilding these is to put the spring into the piston, then into the chamber. If you put the spring in, you run the risk of the edge of the piston hitting the spring and it'll give you more rebound. So you could end up with unequal shocks and you don't want that. So spring into the piston and back into there. So the way these rebound shocks work is as the piston rises up in here in compression, there's a shock wave of silicon fluid that goes up to the top here if that didn't have anywhere to go, then the shock wouldn't move any further, it'd be stopped solid. That fluid is transferred down into here and the fluid bears down on this piston and that there compresses, giving the added volume within the suspension for that, for that shock wave. On the rebound stroke, that spring rebounds the silicon fluid back through the shaft and then bears down on here. That's why for a tuning mechanism for different tracks and different conditions, we have different rates of pistons, holes in our pistons, as well as the weight of the silicon fluid. Now for the fun part, <laughs> the part everybody hates, trust me. And a lot of the frustration comes in from the silicon shock fluid and um, bleeding the air out of that. So there's a lot of things on the market for that. There's um, shock, shock vacuum uh, devices that you fuel your shock full of, full of silicon fluid and then you put it within a vacuum chamber and um, it, it takes, it removes away the air by a vacuum. I'm going to show you that same method, but with something you already have in your toolbox at home. So the parts we'll need for today is the silicon fluid, a syringe, this is a 20 mil syringe, a bit of fuel tubing, of course your 12 mil spanner, and this here, this here is unique um, to the Mechatech parts. If you're rebuilding other shocks, then you won't need these. But this here, this bleed nipple fits into here. So Mechatech sell that as a spare part. This is one I've made. You would have seen in the intro and that was me making this here. Um, again, they're pretty cheap. I'd recommend buying one. If you didn't want to buy one and you wanted to do this um, this weekend because you were so excited by this video, uh, one way you could do is just get a four mil metric um, screw and you could just drill a hole through it with a drill press. All it is obviously is um, threaded with an M4 on one end and a couple of mil hole in there so you could easily do that at home on a drill press but again the best way would be to order the proper part from Mechatech. I'll show you where that goes in a minute. Oh and we need a two, two mil Allen driver there as well. All right, let's make a start in bleeding this fluid. What you need to do is take your syringe, pull the plunger out, get your shock fluid, fill the syringe with your shock fluid. These Mechatex take around 10, 10 mils, so 15 mils in there will be heaps or, or anywhere between 10 and 15. Don't worry about the air. Look how I'm pouring it in there. Fill it with air because I'm going to show you an easy way to get rid of that air. Start by pushing that plunger in, just invert it, and then just slowly, slowly push that fluid up to the top. And you can see here now, 
That is a shock rebuild, it's worst nightmare. Look at that air in there. Well, I'm gonna show you how to bleed that out. What we're gonna do is create a vacuum within this. All you need to do is put your finger over there. If you don't wanna put your finger over there, you can put the fuel line on there and put a clamp on it. But you pull the tube back and it creates a vacuum in there and you'll find all those air bubbles rushing to the top to come out. I don't know whether you can see that there. Obviously it takes a little bit of time because the silicon fluid is quite thick. But if you can see that, look at that. You don't need an expensive shock vacuum unit. You've got one in your garage in the syringe. And then this syringe is gonna be how you feel the shock. Just look how quickly those air bubbles are coming out of that. So we've got our shock fluid that's nice and free of any bubbles. What we wanna do is take the shock body and we wanna just take out one of these little plugs here doesn't matter which one they're both identical they both just are a bleed port from the main body out to the side here we'll screw in our little nipple then we'll take our bit of fuel tube we'll put it on our syringe make sure it's a good nice snug fit and then we'll just push a bit of fluid up till the start this just minimizes the air that goes in there just to here now we connect that to this port we also then want to install this with the plunger down note the position of the plunger so the plunger goes into the fluid we want the fluid to pass reversely so we want the fluid to go in through those holes and up and ultimately we want to fill that cavity in there using the traditional method where you might fill the shock body with oil and then put this plunger in you inherently trap some air as you put that down as you place that in there you're trapping air within there a small amount but trust me that's what's giving you grief follow this method and you'll be fine so plunger goes in, then syringe up in the air so we don't get that last little bit of air in there and then we slowly fill. So the fluid's coming up now, it's past the holes, it's coming up to the top. Hopefully you can see that there. As it comes up to the threads, what we want to start doing is just screwing this in. So we just want one turn. We want to actually expel some fluid out of there and inside that last remaining little bit of air and also filling that pocket in we've just seen. So that piston stays all the way down. You'll feel pressure increases. I'm just starting to get to see a little bit of bleed out here now. That means that whole cavity is full in there and we can do that cap up. Just clean away some of that. The other good part about this is you don't waste silicon fluid. As we compress this now and push that fluid back through, it ends up in the syringe so we can reclaim it and not wasting that expensive shock oil. So this shock body gets done all the way up. We'll give that a little bit of a clean. There you have it, a bled shock. If you're worried about any air that might be in there, what you can do now is work that up and down and watch for any air through here. There's fluid in there, there's fluid in here, there's fluid in there. You've got no chance of sucking in air. The only way you'll get air in there is if you haven't bled it correctly. That feels 
amazing. Right now there's no rebound because rather than pushing that piston down, the fluid's going straight out through here. So here's where you can add rebound if you want. If you want to add rebound, you can pull this shock all the way down, apply pressure to here, and then do take that uh, nipple out and put your screw back in, and that'll withhold pressure. If you want my opinion, no rebound. You'll never ever get rebound right. Um, rebounds the amount of pack you've got in there, whether it be, in this case, fluid, sometimes air, you'll never ever get it consistent. If you want a consistent, uh, if you want a consistent suspension and you want a consistent race, this is what you do. So you can see there, no air as I move that in and out. I'll push it back to the top. We'll give it one last squeeze and then I'm going to remove the tube. I'm going to hold it up because we want silicon fluid to be still at this level here. So we'll pull that tube off. As we unscrew this, you might note a little bit of silicon come out. That's perfectly fine. That's exactly what you want. If silicon's there, there's no air. Air's the enemy, not silicon. So we'll undo this. We'll be it ready with our little bung. There's a nice little bit of silicon there. We screw that in. And then we get to test and feel. That feels amazing. You've never ever felt one of these shocks like this. Just amazing. If I was to push this hard enough, I would get rebound because again, how I explained, the silicon gets forced up through here, back into that reservoir and pushed out. But as we do this now here, it's just nicely passing through the shock fluid. Feels amazing, guys. Well, that's it, guys. I don't know about you, but I'm hanging to get back to the track. I cannot wait. But this is the perfect time to to get some of the maintenance out of the way. Hopefully these videos have been really useful for you, a few of these tips. Hopefully this weekend this has inspired you to get out and re-bleed re those shocks that you've got. Uh, you, you won't believe the difference it'll make. A couple of takeaways from today then was reverse bleeding and just um, uh, bleeding those shocks via that syringe is really, really helpful. If anyone, oh, if anyone's interested in, um, in the shock stand and you've got a laser cutter, um, I'm happy to share the plans for that, so have them there. Just reach out to me and I'll hook you up with those plans. Uh, I know we've been doing a lot of videos on uh, the Mechatech. I've still got a heap more to do, but we will be working soon on the FG Mini. My son Blair races um, a Fiscal FG Mini and there is a mountain of work to do on that thing because uh, Blair doesn't come out of the workshop as much as his old man. So uh, Blair, if you're listening, just watch a few of these videos champ and uh, get, into, get into sorting your car out so I don't have to do it. But anyway, it'll make for some interesting videos so stay tuned, there's something other than the Megatech FW01 coming up very shortly. Anyway. Thanks for watching guys. Oh, and yes, uh, subscribe, like, comment, really helps me out. I uh, love seeing the comments and making some great friends. That last couple of videos has been really, really good and, and people from all over the world are reaching out and it's fantastic. I've made some great friends through this all, so it's really good. Thanks guys.